Hello Raiders, I'm Seamus. And I'm Julia. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the Raider, Raider Report. Report. Chromebooks have taken the school by storm and sparked controversy among students. We report to Jared Terra on this debate. On November 9th, the year-long wait came to an end. The controversial Chromebooks are finally issued to all the students. All speculation and dread finally came to an end along with the Wi-Fi a few days later. Now that everyone has had a chance to utilize the Chromebooks, what do people really think about them? Uh, having a Chromebook is um, like usually helpful when you're like writing essays and stuff so you don't have to like go down to the lab or you don't have to go down to like the library. Do more like schoolwork in school. It's kind of nice to like have the actual technology in front of you. You get to look up things on your own. You don't have to wait for the teacher to find it themselves. They're kind of just handy if you want to like, if you need to look up a word. It just makes the whole like class easier and faster. I just like the efficiency of it. Like having it there, being able to use it if you need it. Now that we have heard what students like about the Chromebooks, let's transition to criticisms students have toward the new devices. Um, there's definitely like a uh, learning curve to like not pulling your phone out every five seconds. The most challenging part about having a Chromebook is definitely finding a place to put it. There are many restrictions on the Chromebooks that I do not find efficient. Like teachers are allowed to block what you can and cannot go on your Chromebook for, like certain websites, but when you go into the next class that you have, the same websites are blocked from the previous teacher. In school, you don't have really a place to charge it. It's, I don't think they were like needed, but whatever, man. It looks like the Chromebooks will remain a controversial topic even after all this time. I'm Jared Terra at the Radio Report. The Somerset Berkeley Show Choir recently had the first competition of their 2017-2018 season. We report to Juliana Galvis to give us a behind the scenes look at what it takes to prepare for competition. Hello Raiders, this is Juliana Galvis from Blue Raider Studios, here to give you a behind the scenes look at the Somerset Berkeley Show Choir. The students who partake in show choir work diligently to prepare for their competitions. They practice song, dance, timing, and positions to create the perfect show. Well, to prepare for show choir competitions, uh, we have three rehearsals every week. Uh, but the week of competitions, we have a dress rehearsal, a full costume, full props, run of the show with the band. The way that it works is everybody who's performing all piles into the auditorium to watch everybody else's show. So when you're up on stage, you, you feel like you're a rock star, that you're in a real live show. The dance has to be right and the song has to be right. So you create the right look from the judge's perspective is really hard. Everybody's usually pretty friendly as well, like they cheer for each other and they don't just like hope that everybody else falls down. My favorite thing about show choir is probably the team aspect of it because we all work together. I love hanging out with all the people and having fun. Before the curtain opens, we are all nervous and scared out of our minds. And we're all excited though, too. We have a little like whole choir like comes together and we do sort of like a team bonding thing right before we go on to try to get rid of those nerves. Which is a really nice cool atmosphere. Everybody gets to know one another and becomes friends with each other too. This has been Juliana Gavis signing off. Many students are preparing to get their driver's license, and with so many new advances, you can never be too informed. We take it to Ryan S. Steves to talk to us on the latest automotive technology. Carbon emissions are increasing, one of the most notable causes being gasoline-powered cars. New alternative fuel sources are being sought out, and it appears that Tesla cars might hold the key to the future. There are 253 million cars and trucks in the United States alone, nearly all of them running on gasoline. With concern over global warming and greenhouse emissions growing, scientists and engineers have been working tirelessly to find new ways to reduce our carbon footprint. Well, like all technology, there's always pros and cons, but at the advent of the internal combustion engine, it provided humans many, many advantages because it allowed for humans to, for the first time, leave the cities and move into the suburbs and that spawned a whole bunch of different industries uh, housing uh, new roads being paved new industries cropping up so it really helped uh, the human condition out quite a, quite a lot well the uh the initial invention was to power and supply up supply some way of moving or transporting goods materials um, and actually basically do work a lot of agricultural technologies 
highly benefited from the internal combustion engine. I think we need to remove and replace internal combustion engines as soon as feasible, as soon as the technology and the economics allows. Much like your cell phone or laptop, Tesla vehicles are powered by a rechargeable battery, just some thousand pounds heavier. Each Tesla vehicle is also equipped with a small watermelon-sized motor that transfers electricity into mechanical energy to make the car move. This method ensures a larger range for charge, is much more cost-effective, and is much more environmentally friendly than your run-of-the-mill internal combustion engine. There's less pollution, and we need to do a better job taking care of our environment, so that would certainly be a step in the right direction. I would say at the onset of this, the introduction of this into our society might be the reliability of these vehicles. Humans' use of it, their use of it in a different way is, is, is just going to be so awesome. So I'm very excited. <laughs> I think we're still a baby in terms of the use of electric vehicles. We, uh, we have not gone out far enough in time to look for, for those failures. Tesla cars aren't the only ones who recognize the necessity for alternative fuel sources. Multiple countries such as China, the UK, France, and Norway have begun to implement plans to ban internal combustion engines entirely in favor of electric cars, projecting to have completely converted by as near as 2025. Sure, I would love to go out and, 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 and drive a Tesla. I would love never ever to pick up a pump with a handle that shoots gasoline into in, into a vehicle. I think the changeover will be quick. Um, I can imagine myself, um, before I give up my driving days, most likely driving an electric vehicle. It looks like the future is just around the corner, and the future is electric. This is Ryan Esteves for the Raider Report. More and more students are starting to apply and visit colleges, and there are many helpful websites out there to help you through the process. We head over to Kelly Calvano to talk about Naviance. Hi, I'm Kelly Calvano, a junior at Somerset Berkeley Regional High School. Being a high school student comes with great amounts of responsibility, college planning being one of them. Sounds scary, right? Well, I'm here to report to you on everything you need to know for college planning. Each year of high school, college inches closer and closer to becoming a reality. Many questions arise such as, where do I start, what do I want to be, and where do I want to go? We start to talk to one of our guidance counselors to help us get started. Well, students should think about it earlier for, um, for lots of reasons, but mostly I'd say course selection is a big reason. Um, if they have an idea of what they'd like to do, then um, they might want to pick classes for that particular major. Um, well, most high schools now have Naviance, and, and then in turn, most colleges use Naviance um, because the main thing is it's um, a way to get your records sent to the colleges you're applying to. So it's like a holding station for all your um, letters of recommendation, for any forms, your transcripts. So for Naviance, I've been applying to a lot of colleges lately and guidance gets to send my transcripts as well as my teacher, teacher recommendations through. Naviance is an easy access site that high school students can use to begin exploring their interests, occupations, and universities that fit their needs. But there are many other tools you can use, such as a personality test and interest survey to direct you to the occupation and college for you. The career interest inventories, I think, is a big one to, to do ahead of time because it kind of forces you to think about it. Um, there's one in Naviance that, that we always try to encourage the kids to do. It like goes through like what you're interested in and then like you find like the salary you're comfortable with, I think. So it definitely helps you figure out what would be best for you, like knowing what you need in your future. It's basically organizing everything and making everything like user accessible. And students can find occupations they're interested in by doing the quizzes. There's a lot of different online testing that you can do to see what area you would best fit in based on your personality. The faculty at SBRHS strive to have their students accomplish their goals. Many teachers here are an active part in a student's life, whether having a student in class, helping them in homework club, or even writing college recommendations for the student when applying to their chosen colleges. Good luck with your college planning. I'm Kelly Calvano, back to you in the studio. That's all for this edition of the Raider Report. I'm Julia. And I'm Seamus. See, See you, you next time. time.